what don't we feel really good about? Because we can address it in the portal. And I think pretty soon, we're, these, this is how the conversation is going to shift. You're going to say, okay, we're, we're loaded here. We're, we're, so we're all set there. If you could go get this, would you go do it? Could you go do it? Will we see them do it? And I think we'll be saying yes about linebacker, probably. I wonder if we're going to say it about corner, receiver, that's defensive end? Safety. You think you see it at safety? Well, Adam Fuller's been aggressive in his language about the safeties. So I wouldn't be stunned if it, it, it's just watch the offers. Watch where the offers go when this is all said and done. Mm-hmm. And you got to also look for the outflow. You got to be prepared for guys in the camp of hurt feelings, as you've called it, to have their feelings hurt and to move on. And that might create a new need that we do not anticipate at a certain position. So you got to, as much as they have maybe too many guys already on the roster mm-hmm. and they need to have a purge, if you lost two players at a position like offensive line, then you might have to go dip back in and go get another offensive lineman just for depth purposes. Uh, you know, I don't know that that specific example is going to come to be. But that's the thing. You've got to be nimble there. To me, defensive end is not a bad candidate. I know you talked about it on Monday in the interview with Ira. I think Kentron actually has a chance to be the number two receiver. I've been impressed with him consistently. It looks like his body control is at a really high level. He doesn't look overwhelmed or out of place. He's not getting screamed at for running the wrong route or having poor depth of technique or consistency. I think Kentron's got a chance to be the number two until Micah Pittman comes back and is healthy. So I don't know that we need to dip into the portal for a receiver per se, especially with Dre Jacobs on the way too. If you have Johnny, or Kentron, Darion Williamson will be thrown into the mix consistently. A guy like Winston right over the middle. Ja'Kai Douglas is another gadget type receiver, but very valuable. I think you've got enough there. You, I don't know that you need to go get another one. If you had a difference maker, a a guaranteed game changer that was out there that was high profile, could really play. Like a return punts, too. Well, that's the big part of this, actually. With Micah being down, and they've had a host of people back there, and I'll be honest with you, none of it feels real good, does it? I mean, you don't you don't like anything back there so far that we've seen on punt returns. So they may have to go get a versatile receiver who's exceptionally good at returning punts. They may have to. I would think defensive end, maybe, is a candidate as well. You already brought one in, but you lost one. It was yeah. just a swap. You'd never have too many of those, too. You got four. You love two. You like a third. You know, you, you know, you could probably need a – probably use another one. I just thought it curious that they said from the outset at spring that Dennis Briggs was be, would be a defensive tackle. I just, you know – I would have thought, given that even with McClendon on the roster at the time, he might be better suited to be a full-time end that could be an edge setter for you. I don't know. I just That was a curious decision to me. Obviously, they see him a hell of a lot more, and they know what they're doing. Yeah. But now it rears its head a little bit more. Do you move Dennis back to fortify the depth there? I think Briggs will be inside. I do. Um, there'll, be, there'll be formations so where they can loaded. use him. Yeah. You know, they're so loaded there. I know. He's, a, he's an interesting... He's an interesting player because I think he actually has a chance to have a big year because I don't think he was healthy last year at all. So I'm really hoping that we see that out of him because he was he was projecting very nicely at the time of his injury. And I know that Adam Fuller's talked about multiple defensive tackle fronts, and so maybe that's an opportunity for him. But if you just look at the depth chart, and let's say that two are going to be out there most of the time, are you going to play Briggs over... Daryl Jackson, Fabian Lovett, Josh Farmer. I mean, uh, down in distance, but you can rotate in all those guys. And, you know, I mean, I get that we like the the rotation there, but it just, you know, Braden Fisk. I mean, at, at some point, when are you going to get the most out of this guy? Or where could you get the most out of this guy? If we have a need for a physical edge setter at end, that might be the place in the home for him. Yeah, not, not, yeah, probably not a bad idea. I, I'm for that reason. I'm really excited uh, for for spring to end. I don't know that we're going to learn anything more than we've already learned, you know, uh, up to this point. Unless somebody really emerges today, and then we get back next week, and they continue the trend of whatever happens out here this afternoon at Doak. 
you know, if you get good safety play today from Shaheen Brown, and then Tuesday we come back and there's the practice and he kicks ass again. You're like, okay, the light bulb's gone off. He was called out by the coach. And now we're seeing, or Akeem Dent, either one. I don't know who he was talking to. I think he was probably talking to both of them. Yeah, Akeem, from what I saw, dropped a couple of, well, one specific. Look, he's just never caught the ball real well. Yeah. When he has opportunities, he drops a lot. They had two picks on Tuesday, Tom, um, that were deflections and they were, they were really nice interceptions because they were difficult. They were, they weren't the kind of deflections that just went straight up and hung in the air forever. They were rocketed off of fingertips and came straight back. And the guys got their hands up and made plays. Jaron Jones made one of those plays. So that, that was a good sign too. Um, you know, I know they're trying to be intentional about it, but we had the conversation already on the show about how much can you really do? I think they're okay. at Corner. I, I think that's a luxury and not a need unless you lose somebody, but, Greedy Vance, I think, has been one of the most consistent defensive backs in spring yeah, camp. He's a better player than I gave him credit for. Same here. Just you know, when he was getting his feet underneath him here at Florida State, all he would do is grab you. So I thought that meant he had no speed or whatever. But the back half of last season was impressive, and he's continued that momentum. Renardo is solid wherever you need him to I be. Like, Renardo's just real, he's a good player. Yeah. And then Fentrell has gotten better as camp has gone on, I think. He's gotten better as camp has gone on. Does that mean that it's a solid issue? and? He's locked down, and he's going to be first-team All-ACC. I don't, no. I'm not ready to say that yet, but he's gotten better. So if you have those three guys, Jerrion has not been bad this camp, and Azaria's come on a little bit late as well, of late. Yeah, you should have enough, especially with Knowles coming back from injury in the fall. I, I just keep doing the thing with the, the standard that we talked about. It feels a lot like settling in some of those areas. It feels a lot like they're adequate. Well, but it doesn't you, feel a lot like there's a difference maker in that group but right you, now. I, I agree. There's nobody that, you know, they would put on the graphic uh, when, you know, the ball is snapped. All right, first play's over. Who are the key playmakers for both teams? You, I don't think you're going to list a corner for Florida State. You're not. You're not. And you haven't You haven't basically for since Jalen left. But if you only can grab, because of roster limitations, two or three guys in the portal, is corner the first place you'd go? Like, that's the question. At what point would corner make the list? Two, three, I really need four to, spots? It's the caliber of the player that's in the portal. It's, it, it's, I mean, are you telling me I've got a crack at a five-star wide receiver who I know is plug and play and will make a difference? Then I'm going there. If you give me a lockdown projected to go number one in the draft or top you know, first round in the draft corner, I'm going there. You know, I, so it really is about the caliber of the player.